Hello guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to go through some of the calculations that will help you to avoid any design loops. We had seen in the previous episode while doing the 3D modeling of the equatorial platform that how simply by choosing some of the dimensions by gut feeling or by hunch will lead you to design iterations or design loops and in today's episode using the calculation we will see how we can avoid them. We will also look at some of the factors and choices that have very influencing factor in terms of how compact the equatorial platform is going to be. So without any delay so as you can see here is a schematic layout of my equatorial platform that we had designed in the previous episode and here I have drawn parallel latitude elevation from the original center of gravity depicted in red a reduced center of gravity with 10 kg counterweight depicted in green and a third center of gravity which is obtained when we put a 15 kilogram of counterweight depicted in blue color now in our previous design we had seen that we had designed it for a latitude of 12.9 degree north and the latitude was passing way below the center of gravity and we also saw that it led to a smaller knot bearing which was causing a probability of center of gravity going out of the balancing plane and thus a risk of toppling over. Now let's assume that we want to design the equatorial platform when the the RA axis is exactly coinciding with the original center of gravity which is this red dot. Here we have just marked the names of the different sides of a right angle triangle that is getting formed. R is actually the radius of the knot bearing. H is the height where our radius of knot bearing is coinciding with the polar axis. Please note that in this case we will assume it to be more or less same as the height of the center of gravity plus the delta in the height between the upper and bottom plates of our tutorial platform which will be shown in detail in the subsequent slides. Here we are going to calculate the P. Note that we already know the angle alpha which is the latitude and we have already calculated the height which is H. Now once we have have calculated the P we will substitute that in the next formula and we will calculate R. Now let's substitute the value that we have calculated in the episode 2 for my 8 inch GSO Dobsonian telescope. After substituting them we get a value of P as 1791.713 millimeters. Now for ease of calculation let's round it off to 1790 millimeters. Now substituting P in the formula let's calculate R and we have got 410 millimeters as the radius of knot bearing. Please note we have rounded it off. Here is the depiction what is the right diameter which is two times the radius for the knot bearing if the center of gravity has to pass through the polar axis. Now in this schematic layout I have drawn two different latitudes one is the 12.9 degrees and the other is 32 degrees and the reason for doing that is to show you guys how designing an equatorial platform for these two different latitudes will influence the size of the equatorial platform with different type of south bearings. Now for a single spindle type south bearing if the polar axis has to pass through the center of gravity you can see for a lower latitude in this case 12.9 degree north the equatorial platform will be stretched however now we can see if we reduce the length the height of the south bearing will go very high obviously we are not making a statue of liberty over here but jokes apart you get the point how aesthetically bad this equatorial platform is going to look like either it will be too long it will be difficult to carry or it will be you know very tall from south side and thus making it very bulky and inconvenient it to transport but just for comparison sake you can see if we want to reduce the length the height of the south bearing will go by a factor of 1.4 so what is the solution now because of uh, various constraints if you want to stick to a single spindle type of south bearing the only solution to reduce the size of the equatorial platform is to lower the center of gravity 
by adding additional weight so you can see if you do that in our case let's say you want to pass now the polar axis through a center of gravity 15 kilogram of counterweight the height difference that you get for the same length of equatorial platform is from 1.4 times the height to 0.9 times the height this is quite a good reduction in terms of the height however i would say the platform would still look very odd from the south end now this is of course not a constraint if you are putting the equatorial platform prominently in some rooftop where you do not have any plans to take this you know, to put it in the car and drive to a dark sky location this design is perfect fine of course it is personal choice as well now in this slide i have tried to explain because of various reasons if you are neither ready to put a counterweight to lower the center of gravity but at the same time you have chosen somehow to put the polar axis at a lower point than the center of gravity you can still do that but you have to design the equatorial platform within the limitation so that the line of gravity does not go outside what will happen if this goes outside your telescope will topple now let's take the example of 32 degree north latitude if you have to design the equatorial platform for a much higher latitude you can see how without significantly increasing the length of the equatorial platform the height of the south bearing is still way lower than our initial design which was for 12.9 degree north for a spindle type of south bearing which means that the single spindle type south bearing is very favorable for the higher northern latitude. Probably the, the more higher you go, 40 or 45 degrees, 60 degrees, the better it is. But it is definitely not recommended for lower latitude. Now, what if we choose the same type of bearing as not bearing? Now, let's take the same example as 12.9 degree north and 32 degree north. You can clearly see, irrespective of the latitude, you can very well control the height as well as the length of the equatorial platform. Which means, if you are choosing this type of north and south bearing, designing a compact equatorial platform for lower latitudes is possible. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you are liking this series. Like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers, guys. Bye bye.